Hey folks, welcome back to another RWD screencast uh, with Brian Gregg. Uh, we're going to be talking today about D3. We're going to be going into some of the details of creating hierarchies of your data. Uh, for those of you who uh, may already be familiar with hierarchies, uh, some of this may be uh, reiterating some uh, information that you already know. Um, obviously, hierarchies are used uh, pretty extensively in computer science for things like uh, class inheritance, uh, things along those lines. Um, you may also be familiar with it from genealogy or its um, you know, biological applications uh, in uh, looking at uh, different genus and species of animals or you know, looking through uh, ancestry of your own families or families of others and uh, how uh, the hierarchies help you to understand you know, parents, grandparents, children, siblings, etc. Uh, as well as if you're familiar with just using the DOM in general uh, in web design, uh, a lot of that uses hierarchies for <coughs> uh, for being able to structure your elements on your page in a way that's uh, meaningful. Uh, but we're going to be taking a look at uh, at uh, hierarchies as they apply to data structures, uh, and it's a very important concept uh, when you're looking at uh, data. You want to oftentimes uh, be able to uh, categorize data uh, at different levels so that you can compare uh, subsections of your data and uh, be able to drill down into uh, more uh, detailed uh, information about that data and be able to compare it at a lower level. So uh, we are going to be taking a look at how we can do that with uh, some population data that I'm, I have. And we're going to look at the anatomy of a hierarchy. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, this here is a uh, graphical rep or a uh, visual representation of the United States broken out by its different uh, regions, subregions, and states. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we're broken the United States out into four major groupings, uh, the West, the Midwest, the Northeast, and the South. Then each of those is uh, further broken down into... Uh, smaller subregions. Uh, for instance, the West is broken down into the Pacific and Mountain areas. Midwest is broken down into the West, North Central, and East, North Central, Northeast into Mid Atlantic and New England, etc. So this gives us a um, a structural breakdown of the United States in a way that allows us to um, uh, group states together within their. Uh, corresponding subregions. So, um, you know, within the Pacific West, we have Washington, Oregon, California, and within the West, we've got Montana and Idaho, et cetera, et cetera. So, this gives us a uh, nice uh, way of drilling down and looking at more detailed information about regions within the United States uh, and be able to compare uh, states to other states in their same corresponding regions. Uh, so how does that work with data? Well, we start with something like the United States, and then uh, we break it down into its next uh, level, its, uh, uh, its next set of ancestors. So we look at the West, the Northwest, the Northeast, and the South. Then uh, when we want to drill down further, we can take a look at one particular region, such as the Northwest, and drill down into its uh, corresponding subregions. So we can look at Mid-Atlantic mid and New England. And we could do this with any one of the uh, subgroupings uh, within the United States, within any one of those regions. And then if we wanted to drill down even further and see what the numbers are that are driving the, uh, the, the uh, totals in those subregions, we can drill down into the mid-Atlantic. We could see data for Illinois, Ohio, etc. And uh, get a perspective into uh, what data is... Uh, driving the overall totals for Mid-Atlantic. So let's take a look at that in a practical application here. So we've got our code up on the screen. This is a uh, brand new program that I've been working on. It's up on GitHub, uh, as well as the corresponding JSON files that I've put together for this example. Uh, so let's take a look at that JSON file. So the JSON file gives us um, a top level node. This is our root node. This is required for our uh, data analysis and pulling the data into D3 and using its hierarchy functions. 
uh, and it has a name, United States, and then it has regions within the United States. Those can be broken down into their individual regions as we had seen on the map. We have the west, the midwest, the south, and the northeast. And if we were to drill down into the northeast, we can see those corresponding subregions that we talked about, the mid-Atlantic and New England. And then drilling down further into mid-Atlantic, we can see New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, etc. You can also see in this data set that I have the population at that lowest level. So here's the thing that makes um, hierarchies really useful. Uh, also kind of makes them a little bit tricky to work with, but uh, with D3's capabilities here, works out nicely. So um, we have each of these individual states, and we know what their population is. But we don't have that data stored at any of the higher levels. So we don't have a population number here for Mid-Atlantic or for Northeast uh, or for the United States uh, for that matter. So in order to be able to get to that, we need to use the functions built in uh, to D3 for handling hierarchies uh, to be able to roll that data up. Now take a look, show you how that's done. So going into our um, just to take a quick look at our main.js. Main.js is pulling in our state pop.json, and it is, when that data is loaded, it's appending an SVG onto our uh, uh, div element on the page with an ID of graph with the attributes of height and width that are stored within our bar graph object, and then it is rendering that bar graph. So let's take a look at what that bar graph actually does. If you've watched my earlier D3 videos, you know how I structure my D3 programs using an init and enter and update and exit function. And uh, here within the render function itself, we're uh, setting up our initial hierarchy. The hierarchy is calling the D3 global objects uh, hierarchy function, which returns regions. So this is important. The reason why we're returning d.regions is because uh, the regions are what represent all of the children within our hierarchy, right down to that lowest leaf, which is the state. So the reason why we're uh, doing that is because we have to have conformity across the names of the children in all of our individual nodes. So a region would represent um, anything from, you know, north, uh, northeast, south, west, right down to the individual states. So those are each regions. And you can see that reflected in the JSON file as well. You can see that uh, regions have a name of west, a region can have a name of Pacific, or a region can have a name of Washington. So. That just gives us the ability to have some conformity as we drill down through our um, through our hierarchy uh, so that D3 knows how to handle that. We could have called that anything. We could have called that children, and it would have uh, handled it just as well. Then we are going to create our root. Our root is where we're going to store the uh, nodes that have, uh, well, the complete hierarchy of nodes with the uh, summation of our D dot population. Now this goes back to what I was saying earlier where our um, our hierarchy needs to know at whatever level that it's uh, currently presenting data from the total of all of the components from its lowest level leaves rolled up. So what this would do is if we were looking at um, New England, it would roll up all of the states in the New England area into the total population. If we were looking for the Northeast, it would roll up everything for New England. It would roll up everything for, um, uh, it would locate, uh, roll up everything for um, all of the areas in the Northeast, and then it would uh, sum those. If we were looking at the United States, it would uh, sum all of the states for all of the subregions for all of the regions and then return the value for that for the United States. So it kind of takes like a bottom-up approach where it rolls everything up from the, from the bottom to the top. We then have our root and we can set 
our let's just take our root dot children so this is going to take the first lowest level after the top level and it's going to set it to a variable called data and it's going to pass that into our init our enter and our update functions so let's take a look at what that looks like and as expected it's going to give us each of the main regions the west the midwest the south and the northeast we can then go and drill down a little bit deeper into any one of those so uh, west is the first element in our array here so if we were to look at the children of west we would see pacific and mountain if we were then to drill down further and look at the children of pacific which is the zero with array in our current array we can now get each individual states washington oregon california and alaska we can compare the populations for those and those numbers look in line with what i would expect we can look at those dates that are in the mountain area as well and see the values for those as well we can, we can actually get a little bit of a better comparison of the numbers so um, you can start to see some of the uh, some of the a applications here <coughs> uh, by providing you with these hierarchies you can then drill up and drill down through your data and be able to present it in a way that's meaningful so we are going to um, stop here with today's video I uh, would like to uh, come back with another video, maybe showing some applications of this uh, and how we can pull some of this into a, um, a data visualization itself. So look forward to that and um, also look forward to your comments. So if you uh, can reply back to the YouTube channel or get me on my Twitter at Ignore Intuition, I'm always happy to hear feedback on uh, the different screencasts. Uh, with that, I will be leaving you this evening, and I hope uh, to see you guys in my next video. Thank you very much.